um, what has been true to too great an extent in conventional medicine in this country, and I think in a lot of places, um, is that death is seen as the ultimate failure, you know, against which you fight with big guns all the way to the end. Um, and we see that for a lot of people that's not appropriate. I mean, I don't know what the experience was with the, the author's friend, um, but for many people it, it becomes appropriate at a certain point that is, I think, most appropriately determined by that person themselves or in conjunction with their loved ones and under the advisement of the medical profession, um, you know, when to make the transition away from the aggressive interventions and, um, and go more for quality of life, dignity, um, you know, having a peaceful death. Um, but I think a really important point is that that line is different for every person. Um, there was just an article on the front page, page of the New York Times the other day about a patient who was at Mount Sinai and, were, and was one of the patients of, of uh, one of our palliative medicine doctors. And, and the patient herself was a palliative medicine doctor. That was what was so interesting. And she herself, although she had been involved in the field of helping people, you know, make that transition, um, she herself um, found that she had to fight. She had to keep fighting for herself. She continued to pursue aggressive therapy up pretty close to the end. And, and so the important point was that that was her individual decision. And so what, what some people might have taken away from the article, well, well, here was a palliative medicine doctor who wasn't doing what she preached, um, that really wasn't the message. It was the message that for every person, you know, they should be empowered to make the right choices based on their personal preferences, but they should, um, you know, I, I, think it's, I think it's the role of people who are interested in seeing the, the experience of dying change to a much, you know, better death. I mean, that's, that's a question, is there such a thing as a good death? And, and I, think, I think, yes, I, I've seen good deaths, and, and I think there can be much better deaths for um, a lot of people. So, um, you know, we have a long way to go, um, even relieving, relieving pain and suffering. We don't do a good job of that. So this woman's friend, you know, she may not have had a, an adequate, um, might not have had adequate treatment of her pain. Um, as as the, the medical profession, we frequently fail in that regard. So, you know, we really need to improve um, people's knowledge about and ability to relieve pain. Um, and that would change the face of dying as well. You know, I think a lot of patients, um, and there's great interest in, um, in assisted suicide, um, and that's a whole, you know, a whole big area of discussion. But it would probably be true that for a lot of patients who were interested in, in assisted suicide, um, you know, maybe the point of that decision would change if they had better treatment, you know, if they were more comfortable with with the process that they were going through. Mm -hmm.